1926.408, Special Systems. 1926.408, A, Systems over 600 volts, nominal. Paragraphs A1 through A4 of this section contain general requirements for all circuits and equipment operated at over 600 volts. 1926.408 A1 Wiring methods for fixed installations. 1926.408 A1 I Above ground. Above ground conductors shall be installed in rigid metal conduit, in intermediate metal conduit, in cable trays, in cable bus, in other suitable raceways or as open runs of metal clad cable designed for the use and purpose. However, open runs of non-metallic sheet cable or of bare conductors or bus bars may be installed in locations which are accessible only to qualified persons. Metallic shielding components, such as tapes, wires, or braids for conductors, shall be grounded. Open runs of insulated wires and cables having a bare lead sheath or a braided outer covering shall be supported in a manner designed to prevent physical damage to the braid or sheath. 1926.408 A. 1. 2. Installations emerging from the ground. Conductors emerging from the ground shall be enclosed in raceways. Raceways installed on poles shall be of rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, PVC schedule 80 or equivalent extending from the ground line up to a point 8 feet, 2.44 meters above finished grade. Conductors entering a building shall be protected by an enclosure from the ground line to the point of entrance. Metallic enclosures shall be grounded. 1926.408 A. 2. Interrupting and Isolating Devices. 1926.408 A. 2. I. Circuit Breakers. Circuit breakers located indoors shall consist of metal enclosed or fire resistant, cell mounted units. In locations accessible only to qualified personnel, open mounting of circuit breakers is permitted. A means of indicating the open and closed position of circuit breakers shall be provided. 1926.408 A. 2. 2. Fused cutouts. Fused cutouts installed in buildings or transformer vaults shall be of a type identified for the purpose. They shall be readily accessible for fuse replacement. 1926.408 A. 2. 3. Equipment isolating means. A means shall be provided to completely isolate equipment for inspection and repairs. Isolating means which are not designed to interrupt the load current of the circuit shall be either interlocked with a circuit interrupter or provided with a sign warning against opening them under load. 1926.408 A. 3. Mobile and Portable Equipment. 1926.408 A. 3. I. Power Cable Connections to Mobile Machines. A metallic enclosure shall be provided on the mobile machine for enclosing the terminals of the power cable. The enclosure shall include provisions for a solid connection for the ground wires terminal to ground effectively the machine frame. The method of cable termination used shall prevent any strain or pull on the cable from stressing the electrical connections. The enclosure shall have provision for locking so only authorized qualified persons may open it and shall be marked with a sign warning of the presence of energized parts. 1926.408 A. 3. 2. Guarding Live Parts. All energized switching and control parts shall be enclosed in effectively grounded metal cabinets or enclosures. Circuit breakers and protective equipment shall have the operating means projecting through the metal cabinet or enclosure so these units can be reset without locked doors being opened. Enclosures and metal cabinets shall be locked so that only authorized qualified persons have access and shall be marked with a sign warning of the presence of energized parts. Collector ring assemblies on revolving type machines, shovels, draglines, etc., shall be guarded. 1926.408 A. 4. Tunnel installations. 1926.408 A. 4. I. Application. The provisions of this paragraph apply to installation and use of high voltage power distribution and utilization equipment which is associated with tunnels and which is portable and or mobile, such as substations, trailers, cars, mobile shovels, drag lines, hoists, drills, dredges, compressors, pumps, conveyors, and underground excavators. 1926.408 A. 4. 2. Conductors. Conductors and tunnels shall be installed in one or more of the following. 1926.408 A. 4. 2. A. Metal conduit or other metal raceway. 
1926.408 A 4 2 B Type MC cable or 1926.408 A 4 2 C Other suitable multiconductor cable. Conductors shall also be so located or guarded as to protect them from physical damage. Multiconductor portable cable may supply mobile equipment. An equipment grounding conductor shall be run with circuit conductors inside the metal raceway or inside the multiconductor cable jacket. The equipment grounding conductor may be insulated or bare. 1926.408 A 4 3 Guarding Live Parts Bare terminals of transformers, switches, motor controllers, and other equipment shall be enclosed to prevent accidental contact with energized parts. Enclosures for use in tunnels shall be drip-proof, weatherproof, or submersible as required by the environmental conditions. 1926.408 A 4 4 Disconnecting Means a disconnecting means that simultaneously opens all ungrounded conductors shall be installed at each transformer or motor location. 1926.408 A 4 V Grounding and Bonding All non-energized metal parts of electric equipment and metal raceways and cable sheaths shall be grounded and bonded to all metal pipes and rails at the portal and at intervals not exceeding 1,000 feet 305 meters, throughout the tunnel. 1926.408 B Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3 remote control, signaling, and power limited circuits. 1926.408 B1 Classification Class 1, Class 2, or Class 3 remote control, signaling, or power limited circuits are characterized by their usage and electrical power limitation, which differentiates them from light and power circuits. These circuits are classified in accordance with their respective voltage and power limitations, as summarized in paragraphs. B1 I through B1 3 of this section. 1926.408 B1 I class 1 circuits. 1926.408 B1 I A. A class 1 power limited circuit is supplied from a source having a rated output of not more than 30 volts and 1000 volt amperes. 1926.408 B1 I B. A class 1 remote control circuit or a class 1 signaling circuit has a voltage which does not exceed 600 volts, however, the power output of the source need not be limited. 1926.408 B1, 2, class 2 and class 3 circuits, 1926.408 B1, 2, A, power for class 2 and class 3 circuits is limited either inherently, in which no overcurrent protection is required, or by a combination of a power source and overcurrent protection. 1926.408 B 1 2 B The maximum circuit voltage is 150 volts AC or DC for a class 2 inherently limited power source and 100 volts AC or DC for a class 3 inherently limited power source. 1926.408 B 1 2 C The maximum circuit voltage is 30 volts AC and 60 volts DC for a class 2 power source limited by overcurrent protection and 150 volts AC or DC for a class 3 power source limited by overcurrent protection. 1926.408 B1-3 Application The maximum circuit voltages in paragraphs B1-I and B1-2 of this section apply to sinusoidal AC or continuous DC power sources and where wet contact occurrence is not likely. 1926.408 B2 Marking a class 2 or class 3 power supply unit shall not be used unless it is durably marked or plainly visible to indicate the class of supply and its electrical rating. 1926.408 C. Communications Systems, 1926.408 C. 1. Scope. These provisions for communication systems apply to such systems as central station connected and non central station connected telephone circuits, radio receiving, and transmitting equipment and outside wiring for fire and burglar alarm, and similar central station systems. These installations need not comply with the provisions of 1926.403 through 1926.408 B, except 1926.404 C, 1, 2, and 1926.407. 1926.408 C, 2, Protective Devices, 1926.408 C, 2, I, Circuits exposed to power conductors. 
Communication circuits so located as to be exposed to accidental contact with light or power conductors operating at over 300 volts shall have each circuit so exposed provided with an approved protector. 1926.408, C, 2, 2, Antenna Lead-Ins Each conductor of a lead-in from an outdoor antenna shall be provided with an antenna discharge unit or other means that will drain static charges from the antenna system. 1926.408, C, 3, Conductor Location, 1926.408, C, 3, I, Outside of Buildings, 1926.408, C, 3, I, A, Receiving Distribution Lead-In or Aerial Drop Cables Attached to Buildings and Lead-In Conductors to Radio Transmitters shall be so installed as to avoid the possibility of accidental contact with electric light or power conductors. 1926.408, C, 3, I, B, the clearance between lead-in conductors and any lightning protection conductors shall not be less than 6 feet, 1.83 meters. 1926.408, C, 3, 2, on poles. Where practicable, communication conductors on poles shall be located below the light or power conductors. Communications conductors shall not be attached to a crossarm that carries light or power conductors. 1926.408, C, 3, 3, inside of buildings. Indoor antennas, lead-ins, and other communication conductors attached as open conductors to the inside of buildings shall be located at least 2 inches, 50.8 millimeters, from conductors of any light or power or class 1 circuits unless a special and equally protective method of conductor separation is employed. 1926.408, C, 4, Equipment Location. Outdoor metal structures supporting antennas, as well as self-supporting antennas such as vertical rods or dipole structures, shall be located as far away from overhead conductors of electric light and power circuits of over 150 volts to ground as necessary to avoid the possibility of the antenna or structure falling into or making accidental contact with such circuits. 1926.408, C, 5, Grounding, 1926.408, C, 5, I, Lead-in Conductors. If exposed to contact with electric light or power conductors, the metal sheath of aerial cables entering buildings shall be grounded or shall be interrupted close to the entrance to the building by an insulating joint or equivalent device. Where protective devices are used, they shall be grounded. 1926.408, C5, 2, Antenna Structures Masts and metal structures supporting antennas shall be permanently and effectively grounded without splice or connection in the grounding conductor. 1926.408, C, 5, 3, Equipment Enclosures. Transmitters shall be enclosed in a metal frame or grill or separated from the operating space by a barrier, all metallic parts of which are effectively connected to ground. All external metal handles and controls accessible to the operating personnel shall be effectively grounded. Unpowered equipment and enclosures shall be considered grounded where connected to an attached coaxial cable with an effectively grounded metallic shield. 1926.408